I've played Fire Emblem Engage to completion, so it's time to talk spoilers. Needless to say, this is a spoiler-filled video. So if you haven't played the game, watch my spoiler-free review, play the game, and then come back here. This will be a more casual video where I share my thoughts about the game's ending, the arcs of the characters, how Engage connects to other games and its canonicity with them, as well as my DLC and sequel predictions. Unfortunately, some of the details of the DLC have leaked, and I have seen them, but I won't spoil what characters and emblems are coming. However, I will touch on a minor detail from the leaks, which won't spoil the DLC at all. Still, if that does concern you, then feel free to skip the DLC section. With that out of the way, grab your toothpaste and let's get started. That ending was certainly something, wasn't it? Not only was it great, unexpected, and something we've never before seen in Fire Emblem, it canonized a long-held fan theory. That fan theory being that all Fire Emblem games take place in alternate dimensions, or realms, and that the walls between realms are permeable, with a central nexus realm between them. I'll circle back to this part later. Anyway, this nexus realm is where the final showdown between Aelia and Sombron takes place, with Sombron finally revealing his goal, to return to his original world, and be reunited with the Zero Emblem, or the Emblem of Foundations. I thought this was a really neat way to tie in Sombron's motivation to emblems and Engage's overall theme, yet this reveal came way too late in the game. Not only that, it left unresolved who the Zero Emblem actually is, being someone we can't see. I was hoping for some big revelation, whether a returning hero, an exciting new character, or some kind of divine being capable of opening portals between realms. Anything would have been nice. But besides that, I really appreciated that this game had a definitive ending. Alia's arc was complete, the world was saved, and we emotionally said goodbye to the emblems, with all the emblems getting a moment in the spotlight. It succeeds as both a standalone game, and as a celebration of the Fire Emblem franchise. Being the most accessible Fire Emblem game for newcomers, this ending will certainly inspire new fans to seek out other games. While in my review I said that Engage was slow to get going and its world and lore weren't as interesting as the ones in Three Houses, it concludes in a more satisfying way, with a bittersweet and more importantly resolved ending. Let's start with Toothpaste Chan. I said that despite being voiced and expressive, I still found them a bit bland. My opinion remains mostly unchanged, but I was really impressed with their arc by the end. When we finally get the reveal of their backstory, it feels exciting and fresh, and unlike something we've ever seen in Fire Emblem. While they're still rife with JRPG cliches, like no memory, child of the villain, their backstory not being what they thought, the reveals were still exciting when they do happen. I didn't expect that Lumera was not actually their mother, but an adoptive figure, and I liked seeing their first meeting in the past. And because Aelia travelled to the past, they set that fateful meeting in motion. It's a timey-wimey paradox, another cliché of the genre, but one of my favourite clichés. I love time travel stories done well, and this is one of them. And Aelia's transition into an emblem was not something I expected, but I really love that too. While it's cheap to kill a character and bring them back, I love the trial Aelia had to go through, being resurrected as a corrupted, and then the consequence for revival, the emblems sacrificing their power to make Aelia an emblem. When that scene happened and Marth said, Do it. Become the 13th emblem. I was thinking, don't say it, don't say it, the fire emblem. Yep, he said the thing. Cheesy as hell, but whatever. And coming full circle to their toothpastey design, I loved that their mismatched eyes and hair were fully explained by the story, which I'd hoped for. When they were past Aelia doing Sombron's bidding, their hair was red. And after their defection, Nap, and Lumera's influence, it became half red and half blue. And finally, their emblem form was entirely blue. Their mismatched hairstyle represents the halfway point of their transformation and contrasts nicely with the red hair the emblems have when engaged by the enemy. While not liking Aelia at first, their arc and outstanding vocal performance have made them one of my favourite Fire Emblem characters. And I can't wait to play as them in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Deluxe for the Nintendo Switch 2, hopefully with alternate colours for Aelia, Divine Dragon Aelia Class Aelia, Past Aelia and Emblem Alia, with a moveset that incorporates the engage mechanic. As for the villain Sombron, I'm still not excited by him, although the design is cool. I felt that we didn't get nearly enough of his backstory and motivations until the end, which was just too little, too late. While his final battle was fun to play, and I got really excited by the introduction of Dark Emblems, villains from previous games, this was such a disappointment. With only hints at who they are and no faces on them, it feels cheap and thrown in at the last minute, when it should have been one of the more thrilling moments. We could 
could have done away with that entirely. As for the rest of this cast, I liked most of these characters, but not as much as the cast of Three Houses. This is mostly because their backstories aren't really complex, and there aren't any major political and religious themes going on. Three Houses had so much lore to uncover, and the support conversations there were full of little nuggets of insight, but none of that is here in Engage. That's fine though, as the characters are cute and fun, and the supports are more funny than emotional. I recommend the one between Lyndon and Morvier, with Lyndon guilt-tripping Morvier into helping him make popcorn. The funny and inconsequential supports are another way this game accommodates newcomers, as comprehensive lore and backstory might be a bit overwhelming for them. In my review, I talked about the leaps forward in representation Engage does not only for the franchise but gaming in general, with black and queer characters at the forefront of the game. Going one step further was the option to marry anyone of your choice. I chose to marry male Aelia with the queer baiting sea doll, a match made in gay heaven. Their S support was really cute. It's just amazing to see all this inclusivity in Nintendo media. It's pretty mind-blowing that we see the realm between realms, with the climax of the game taking place there. It looks like outer space, just like the Outrealm battle menu from Fates, confirming the theory that these universes are interconnected through it. I wonder how long something like this has been in the works, and seeing it represented in Engage justifies a lot of the canonically uncertain aspects of previous games. For example, the DLC battles in Awakening, which brought in characters from different universes, why there are Awakening characters who are transported into Fates' universe, why the OG Fire Emblem Warriors exists, and how Grima made the jump from the post-game of Echoes into the timeline of Awakening. The walls between universes and timelines are permeable, and now that this is explicit, it really unifies all the Fire Emblem games into a cohesive whole. I'm sure Fire Emblem experts have a lot more to say on this matter, so sound off in the comments. Something that also connects these universes is the recurring word Fell. Engage's villain Sombron is called the Fell Dragon, and this is not the first time we've had a character called that. Grima in Awakening was also a Fell Dragon. What Sombron and Grima have in common is that they both came from other universes into the games they feature in. As I mentioned, Grima came from the universe slash timeline of Echoes, whereas Sombron came from an as of now unseen one. And in Three Houses, Nemesis refers to Sothis as the Fell Star, and plenty of fan theories speculate that Sothis also came from another world or outer space to colonize Fodlan. While I don't think Sothis is an alien in our human extraterrestrial sense of the word, the confirmation of interdimensional travel in Engage, as well as the word Fell, confirm that Sothis came from another dimension or world. While none of this has much consequence to overall storytelling in Fire Emblem, it's interesting to ponder what this means for the Fire Emblem universe's future. And speaking of the future, we already know that DLC is on the way. My consumer ass already bought the first wave, and I enjoyed using Edelgard, Dimitri, Claude, and Tiki on my playthrough. As I mentioned earlier, the DLC characters and emblems have leaked, and I won't be discussing them here. As for the leaks, there is just one thing I want to focus on. The use of the word fell, as well as the use of the word Xenolog. Xenolog was used in Awakening for the DLC Paralogs, which featured characters from alternate universes. Considering this term is back, as well as Engage's explicit connectedness to other games, we can assume that these will involve characters from other games. And considering that they're called Fel Xenologues, these will surely feature villainous characters. This makes me incredibly excited, and I hope it redeems the disappointment that was the Dark Emblems in the final battle. We can only speculate as to what the Fel Xenologues will entail, whether they make up the bulk of the story content, or if they're semi-canonical side stories. I hope it's the former, and I'd love to see the Dark Emblems in the spotlight light. For whatever Wave 4 or the expansive story-based Wave is, it could be anything. I've seen people online mention they'd like to see an expansion based on the Four Hounds, which is not a bad idea. Playable Zephyr and Gris would be a riot. As for my personal hope, I hope it explores Sombron's original world and resolves the Zero Emblem slash Emblem of Foundations mystery. I really want to know who that is, and if it's revealed, I'm sure it has major consequences across multiple Fire Emblem universes. It's insane to think that Fire Emblem is now another piece of multiverse media, with every major franchise jumping on the multiverse trend. How they use a Fire Emblem multiverse remains to be seen. 
And finally, the next game in the series. Considering this being the first Fire Emblem game for a lot of people, as well as how the story ends, a direct sequel is more than possible. Previous games like Awakening, Fates, and Three Houses had multiple endings, but this one only has one ending, and it ends with most of the major characters alive and well. While you can marry one character, and in the closing montage there is some information given about the cast's future, none of these have major consequences. Most of the little descriptions detail funny things that happen in their future, and not many of them die. Although I do remember it said Alfred died. Sorry Alfred fans. Anyway, there's enough here to make a direct sequel, the first direct sequel we've seen since Path of Radiance on the Wii. While there was Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes, that story was an alternate take on the first game, and did not take place after the events of Three Houses, which would not have been possible considering that game's multiple endings. As for what the sequel would entail, I feel like Engage even sets up threads for one. The most obvious one being that final post credits tease that the Emblem Ring's power is returning, and that the emblems will be engageable once more. Emblem Marth and Aelia even promise to meet again. I already mentioned the unresolved mysteries of the Zero Emblem and Sombron's world, so these could be ripe for a sequel. Or it could take an entirely different direction with no multiversal stuff at all. Perhaps a neighbouring continent just invades Elios and war breaks out. Or we could take control of the descendants of Aelia and friends. Anyway, whatever the story is, the point is Aelia has an established presence that could be expanded on. And it would be a shame for the engaged mechanic to be a one and done feature, considering Intelligent Systems had to do a lot of restructuring of Fire Emblem mechanics to make it work, as well as Aelia's role as an emblem coming too late into the game to be explored fully. More Aelia, more emblems, more multiverse I say. And if it's not a direct sequel, I have enough faith in Intelligent Systems and Fire Emblem that whatever comes next will be just as good, if not better. Thanks for watching until the end. So what are your hopes for the future of Fire Emblem? What did you like or dislike about the ending of Engage? Let me know in the comments and I'll reply to you. And if you liked this video, consider dropping a like and subscribing. Thanks for listening to me ramble, and after all that talking, it's time to brush my teeth. Ugh, that is truly awful. I don't recommend Japanese Aquafresh. Anyway, I'll see you next time.